Hello and welcome to today's installment of 13 Reasons Why Students Underperform. Now, I've got a story which I think might be a bit illuminating and get to a problem that a lot of students have. At one of the very first lectures which I had at one of the universities I attended, I was given a lecture by a rather remarkable playwright, one of the most decorated playwrights in the country in fact, and most of the class virtually fell asleep during the lecture. There were about six or seven of us who were rather more mature, tragically I wasn't one of them, who were wrapped by everything that she said, but the rest of the class were absolutely passing out. We found what she was doing so dreadfully dull, and at the end of the lecture, I'll never forget, she closed her notes and she looked up and she said, absolutely straight face, she says, I can see that you're bored. And from that I conclude that you are boring. And of course, in our adolescent teenage states, we thought, oh, that's ridiculous, she's the boring one, etc. But there's something very interesting in what she said, which I think is true. Oftentimes, students think that the teacher is solely responsible for keeping their attention. But I don't actually think that that's the case. We know that we feel excitement about something, we find interest in something if we are engaged in the process itself. And for the seven students who were in that lecture theatre and completely absorbed by what the professor was saying, it was a matter of their personal interest and their ongoing attempts to understand what she was saying, keeping their attention. Everybody else who started to switch off was not engaged. In other words, learning is a process of dialogue. It's not simply you as a passive person absorbing things. You need to be engaged in some way. And that leads me up to the thing which I think students often get wrong. Students often underperform because they lose concentration. And I would like to argue that your concentration is going to do better if you oblige yourself to think about what's being said. You need to force yourself to pay attention to what's going on. Now, that's the biggest advice to help concentration, and a few hints is always change words, never change meaning. That's one useful thing. But another thing which is quite useful is if you pose questions, if you engage, if you raise your hand, etc., and start an internal or even an external debate so that you're actually thinking about what's going on. It's not possible to concentrate if you are not engaged. They're virtually synonyms. So that's fairly straightforward, but you can't really expect that you're going to pay attention well to something if you're not engaged in that thing. Even things like computer games, which very few students who have concentration difficulties battle with computer games, let's be clear, one of the reasons that they find those things interesting is because they need to actually perform some kind of role shoot this, jump there, do that, etc. The moment that you give that same student a game which doesn't encourage participation, of course, they lose concentration. So, your concentration, firstly, is going to be enhanced by any efforts that you make to actively involve yourself in the process. The commonest one I say is always change words, never change meaning, because even if you find something as boring as sin, it forces you to pay attention to what's going on. Second, your diet can play a role in concentration. Now, generally speaking, there are four things that I tell people that they should try and avoid. Artificial sweetness, artificial colorants, artificial flavorings, and preservatives. Generally speaking, those four artificial chemicals should be avoided because if you do avoid them, it normally leads to an increase in your concentration. Now, this does vary person to person, so what I'm about to say is particularly strong for me, but it applies to a lot of people. If I have artificial sweetener, so aspartame, for instance, is the commonest sweetener on the market. I think that that's still true, but anyway, it's an absolutely redolent sweetener. If I have aspartame, 
I get a very particular headache almost immediately and I lose the ability to concentrate. Believe it or not, I even battle to phrase sentences properly or to understand what people are saying. And normally I do not battle to phrase sentences. So it really is quite extreme. So your diet plays a large role. There are huge debates about the impact of sugar. That would be the one that I'd say is closest to me being definite that you should also avoid in addition to the artificial things but I'm not going to be draconian about it. What I will say is try and avoid artificially produced foods as much as possible to enhance your concentration. And then the third thing is that often what happens is we lose concentration because our thoughts are jumping about here for there for there for there. And so something which I often advocate to reduce stress is mindfulness, being conscious of what's actually going on in the moment to switch off those wandering thoughts so you can concentrate better. Now, a very simple example, I give a better example in the stress reduction exercise because I, I'm conscious that people might need a little bit longer to cool down, but just from a concentration point of view, please close your eyes now, be aware of your breathing. Literally notice the air. How does it feel? Does it enter your nostrils? And as it filters down into your lungs? Can you feel your heartbeat beneath that? What texture does your clothing have? What sounds can you hear? I can hear dogs. And open your eyes. That simple mindful exercise is a way of you going away from what you think about, think about, think about into what's going on at the moment. So there are a few concentration tricks and I'd better sign off because my dogs clearly need something. I'm sure that there are some vicious poodles or something walking down the road and we must make sure that the poodles don't win the battle between them and the Ridgebacks. Okay everyone, have a wonderful day.